NES is the first console I owned as a kid. My brother and I received one bundled with Super Mario Bros. 3. To this day, it is still my favorite video game. The gray toaster box is iconic, and I absolutely still play NES games today. It is great that both young and old gamers have access to games on the Nintendo Switch online service. Most of Nintendo's top titles are available, along with some not so great third party ones. This list will focus on non-licensed games, as licensed games have a small chance of being released for the service. Nintendo has been releasing titles pretty sparingly and randomly at times. They also have 5 platforms to release games for, 6 if you include the Genesis. Having said that, here is a list of the top 10 NES titles I would like to see released. Number 10. Spy Hunter First game on our list is Spy Hunter a combat action game that was released for the NES in 1987. The gameplay is pretty simple and straightforward. The game uses a top-down perspective. You navigate the road trying to take out enemy vehicles and save civilians. You navigate your car with a D-pad and shoot your machine guns with the B button. There are three special weapons you can also use with the A button. Oil slicks, smoke screens, and service to air missiles. You can obtain these special weapons by entering the weapons van. A fun note to add, game designer George Gomez drew inspiration for the game while listening to James Bond music on an audio cassette. The game is challenging, but also fun and easy to control. I think this would be a solid title to add to the Nintendo Switch Online Library. Number 9. Street Fighter 2010 – The Final Fight Number 9 on our list is Street Fighter 2010 a side scroll and action game published and developed by Capcom in 1990. Straight up, we have to talk about the story. In the Japanese version, the name of the protagonist is Kevin. When the game came to North America, they decided to change his name to Ken Masters. Yes, that Ken Masters. The story is this. You take control of a martial artist with cybernetic implants. 25 years after retiring from your Street Fighter career, you're back. A new cyboplasm substance was developed by a lab partner named Troy. Unfortunately, Troy is murdered and you have to find and bring the killer to justice. The game was likely connected to the Street Fighter property to make it easier to market and sell. Capitalism! Of course! The game is difficult from the start and it pulls no punches. You'll likely be dying and retrying from stage one. The control seems to be pretty solid though, so you should have no issues there. Overall. I think it would be fun to see this on the service. Number 8. Mighty Final Fight Number 8 on our list is Mighty Final Fight. The game was published and developed by Capcom and released for the NES in 1993. The game is a side-scrolling beat-em-up and a spin-off of the arcade game Final Fight. The game's plot follows the same premise of the original Final Fight. Mayor Hagger's daughter, Jessica, has been kidnapped by the Mad Gear Gang, and you have to rescue her. You have the choice to play one of three characters, Mayor Mike Hagger, Cody, Jessica's boyfriend, and the dude that was absent from the Super Nintendo version, Guy. The graphics are more cartoony and less serious. The combat is super fun, and it is surprising how solid it is, as I don't care for most beat-em-ups on the NES. Well, with the exception of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3, The Manhattan Project. I don't know if it is actually better than the Super Nintendo version, but it is pretty close. It is definitely worth having on the service. Number 7. Yoshi's Cookie Number 7 on our list is Yoshi's Cookie, a title matching puzzle game published by Nintendo and released for the NES in North America in 1993. There is also a Game Boy and Super Nintendo version. You are presented with a grid with a bunch of different cookies. Your objective as the player is to scroll across and mix and match the cookies and clear them off the grid. There are a few game modes to choose from too. There is a single player action mode where the player plays through level after level, trying to clear cookies in each stage. There is also a verse mode where you can play against a friend. Cookie time! This is not my favorite puzzle game, as I prefer gems such as Dr. Mario or Wario's Woods, but it certainly deserves a spot in the service. Number 
Number six, a Steinax. Number six on our list is a Steinax, a side scroll action game published by Jaleco for the NES in 1990. The game is also known as The Lord of King in Japan. Here is a lowdown on the plot. A Steinax is a 16 year old student from Greenview High School. He has a recurring dream where a young girl keeps calling out to him. Wish I had girls that were calling out to me. <laughs> Not funny, man. You are then transported to another dimension. You meet a fairy named Cutie. Not making this up. Cutie proceeds to tell you about the Kingdom of Rimlia. You have been summoned to rescue a princess named Rosebud. My name is Rosebud. Rosebud. Rosebud is being held captive by an evil wizard named Blackhorn. Man, I swear this game is worth playing just for the plot. The game is your typical side scrolling action game. You progress through stages, jumping over pits and obstacles. You have an axe to take out enemies. It is fun and simple enough. I feel this game would be a good addition to the service. Number 5. Stinger. Number 5 on our list is Stinger. Stinger is a shoot em up video game published by Konami and released for the NES in 1987 in North America. I remember playing this game a little when I was really young, so I have a lot of nostalgia for it. There are vertical stages to progress through, as well as side scrolling stages. There's also a two player co op mode, so you can bring a buddy along. The gameplay is pretty simple. You move your character with the D pad and shoot with the B button all while dodging attacks from enemies. There are also bells you can collect that power up your character. Part of the charm for me are some of the crazy looking boss characters. If you want any proof this game is from Japan, just look at the bosses. The game is a typical shooter at the end of the day. If you like games like Gradius, you'll like this. This one holds a special place in my heart though, and I'd love to see it on the service. Number 4. Daydreaming Davy. Number 4 on our list is Daydreaming Davy, an action adventure game developed by Sculptured Software and published by HAL Laboratory. The game was released for the NES in 1992. This game is a unique little gem from my childhood. A lot of people watching this have probably never heard of the game. You play the role of a boy named Davy. While attending school, you have issues staying awake. You are constantly wandering off and daydreaming. During nap time, there are three major themes you'll be exploring. The Dark Ages, Wild West, and Ancient Greece. I remember playing in the Wild West theme stage the first time you venture there. My brother and I would spend hours grinding and selling snake skins for money just to buy guns and ammo we would never use. Who knows why? The game has a password system too, so you can take a break, come back, and keep dreaming. Although I don't feel there are a lot of people campaigning for this game's release, it sure is a lot better than some of the titles already on the service. Draw. Number 3. Little Samson. Number 3 on our list is Little Samson. This game was published by Taito and released for the NES in 1992. Little Samson is an action side scrolling game reminiscent of Mega Man. You jump with the A button and shoot projectiles with the B button. The control is solid and it is a lot of fun to play. The plot is this. A dark prince is free from his seal due to a thunderstorm. The kingdom is in trouble and so he seeks the help of four heroes under his orders. You are then given four introductory stages to play each character. Now, I'll give you a four digit reason for why this game needs to be released on the service. Four digits you ask? Yes, four digits. Just scroll through eBay listings. This has got to be one of the most expensive retro games out there. Damn! Talk about sticker shock. All kidding aside though, this game is great and we need it on the Switch. Number 2. Duck Hunt. Number 2 on our list is Duck Hunt. The game was both published and developed by Nintendo. It was released in Japan for the Famicom in 1984 and in North America for the NES in 1985. This was one of only a handful of games that required a light gun controller in order to play. It was most commonly bundled with the original Super Mario Bros. game on one card. I actually own two copies of the card. The game is pretty straightforward. There are three game modes. Game A features just one duck at a time, Game B features two ducks at a time, and Game C is clay pigeon shooting. I didn't care for Game C much as a kid. You are given three chances to shoot the duck. If you fail, the bird flies away. 
You also have that lovely brown dog to cheer you on when you succeed, or laugh at you when you fail. What an asshole. On the Switch, the game would likely require you to use the Joy-Con with its motion control and the cursor display on the screen to help you aim. This is likely the compromise that will have to be made in order to play it today. It's how it was done on the Wii U after all. The game is definitely iconic, although to be honest, it can get old pretty quickly. It was however one of the first video games I ever played. If you have 20 minutes to spare, why not cap off a couple of ducks? Number 1 Ninja Gaiden 2 and Ninja Gaiden 3 For the top place on our list, we have two games, Ninja Gaiden 2 and Ninja Gaiden 3. Both games were published and developed by Tecmo. Ninja Gaiden 2 was released in 1990, Ninja Gaiden 3 was released in 1991. If you played the first game, you know what to expect. A side-scrolling action game that will put your balls to the wall and make no apologies. Expect to die a ton as you retry over and over again until you master it. Now, let's get to the plot of both games. In Ninja Gaiden 2, the story follows the events of the first game. In the realm of darkness, an evil lord Ashtar is informed of Jaquayo's defeat and devises a plan to rule over the earth by opening the Gate of Darkness. Ryu is commissioned by Robert T. Sturgeon to take out Ashtar. In Ninja Gaiden 3, the game's events take place between 1 and 2. Irene Liu is being chased by a man who looks like Ryu to the edge of a cliff where apparently she meets her doom. Ryu needs to clear his name, so he goes on the mission to investigate. The first game is a classic, so it is great that it is on the service. That is why I find it odd that the two sequels are not on there. That needs to change. Let's complete the trilogy. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Please consider dropping a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a comment down below. That greatly helps me out. Also, don't forget to hit that notification bell if you want to be alerted on future videos coming out. See you in the next video. Take care.